Hi everyone, this is Deanne Eisenman with Snuggles Quilts and today I want to talk to you about building a scrap stash. If you're a follower of mine, you know that I love to do scrap quilts and I consider scrap quilts uh, quilts that are um, uh, contain maybe seven, eight, nine, ten different fabrics. I think two color and three color quilts are absolutely beautiful. But I really like to have my quilts made up of blocks with um, several different combinations of colors. So in order to do that, I've over the years had to build what I call a scrap quilting stash. Now, I used to have um, all this fabric scattered around, folded on shelves, different sizes in different places. And so it was difficult for me to find the um, fabrics I was looking for when I wanted them. So I came up with this system. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I create a scrap stash, which is um, having a different or a, a one color in a different size in every bin that I have in my storage. So I'm starting out with this green fabric. It's one yard of fabric. And I like to do that. I like to buy a yard of fabric and then cut it up into smaller pieces. So. First thing we're going to do, and I do this just to make it a little bit easier to cut my yard. I'm going to fold it up like this. It's, it's a, maybe a little teeny bit over a yard. Lay it out on my table, and then I'm going to cut it in half so that I have two half yards of fabric. So there you go. I have two half yards right here. So one of the half yards, I'm going to take, fold it up, because sometimes I have projects that need a half a yard of fabric. And then I have, here's my storage system. I buy these containers from uh, any kind of a big box store like Target, Walmart. Um, you can even get them on Amazon. This is a Sterilite container, but there's a bunch of different brands. And then I label it on the front. This one is my half yards, and I have greens, oranges, and golds in this bin. And you can see them all nicely folded up. And if it gets more full with one particular color, I'll get another tub and perhaps take the golds and the, uh, the oranges out and just have it all green depending on if I get a lot of green. So that is what I do there. That's my half yards. Next up, we have this half yard left. So I want it to be uh, cut into two fat quarters. So I unfold it and then here's the fold of the fabric right here. I will take my fabric scissors and I will cut along this fold. I'll try I'll make sure that it's even up here so I'm getting an even amount for both pieces that I end up with. So now you're going to end up with two fat quarters. They should be about 18 by 20 or 22 inches, depending on the original width of the fabric you started out with. So I'm going to take this one fat quarter, fold it up. And then I have, you guessed it, a fat quarter box. So here's my fat quarter box. This one has greens and browns. This one's getting kind of full with browns, so I might end up having to get a new container for my green. But meanwhile, I put that piece of green fabric in there, and it's all set and ready for me when I need a quarter yard of green. Now we have this fat quarter left. So what I like to do with this fat quarter that is left is I fold it in half like this. Um, so now it is basically folded in half, so it's 18 by 10, 11, 12, however long your fat quarter was to begin with. And I cut it in half. Um, because I want two fat eighths. Now fat eighth is nine by 20, 21, 22, depending on your original width of fabric. So I'm gonna cut it here. And now I have two fat eighths. Now, I used to store the fat eighths like that in those tubs, but 
Fat Ace are a little bit uh, smaller once they get folded down. So they are, um, they kind of slide underneath each other and you end up losing your pieces of fabric. Um, and then you, you're looking through it and you're going, oh, I thought I had a green Fat Ace. Well, and then you didn't. So what I do is I fold it up like that, fold it this way, and then I roll it like this. And I found these clear rubber bands um, in the hair section at uh, Target. You can probably find them at Walmart, any other uh, store that sells hair supplies. And I rubber band it like that. Now you can easily store these in tubs. It's easier to rifle around in the tubs and you end up with um, being able to find your fabric easier. So that's for that. Now what do I do with this last fat eighth? I usually don't want to have uh, two fat eighths of the same color. So since I love to make uh, log cabin blocks um, and a whole bunch of other different blocks that you can get from two and a half inch and one and a half inch strips, my next thing is to cut the remaining fat eighth into strips that I can store and use. So the first thing I'm gonna do with this remaining fat eighth is I'm going to square it up. So this is how you, you kind of pull it, put it, hold it by the selvage and you make sure that the bottom is nice and flatly folded. And how you see how that has a little bit of a overlap here from the back. That means that now it has to be trimmed so that it's nice and square. So what I do is I take this ruler and I line it up with the bottom fold right there. And then I take my ruler where I'm going to cut and I get them meeting so that it's basically a 90 degree angle that they meet at. And then I can move this ruler away and cut that. And so now this piece of fabric is nice and square so that when I cut strips, the strips aren't going to be bent in a wonky way um, at the fold. So now what I do with this last fat eighth is I'll cut a couple of two and a half inch strips. And then I will cut a couple of one and a half inch strips because those are the two size strips that I use the most. And I use them to make blocks I use them to make scrappy borders. And I also use them sometimes to make um, scrappy binding. And especially if you have a really fun scrap quilt and then you have all of this extra fabric, you can have a really interesting scrappy border. So I used to store these strips in uh, Ziploc bags, which what would happen is they would get all mixed up in the bag I still had them separated by color, but somehow, even though they were just stored in the bag, they would get shredded um, and frayed. So I came up with another system. I found these more shallow tubs uh, in the store, and uh, you could also find them online. It is um, probably about four inches, four or five inches. So it's not really that deep. And I've, you can see I've got this one labeled for green and pink strips, two and a half inches. And what I did, I guess it's green and purple, sorry. What I did is I took some acid-free cardboard and I made my own little dividers in here to keep the, the, the strips separate. Um, and so then I will take my two and a half inch strips and I'll lay them inside one of the stacks of green strips and there you go I have them ready and I have the same kind of a tub for these one and a half inch strips and so then I will have them in their one and a half inch strip tub. Now they do sell these uh, tubs with ready-made um, uh, dividers now so if you find those that's that would be excellent you'd be able to you'd be ahead of the game and won't have to make your own dividers but the dividers are important if because if you just place them in here in their rows without anything in between, then they would probably start ending up getting all tangled and, and 
involved, you know, all, all tangled and messy again, um, just like they did in the bag. So, so there you go. That is my system for scrap quilting. So now I have that green fabric in half, uh, half yards, quarter yards, fat eighths, and in strips. And I am ready to make a scrap quilt to, by combining that with all the rest of my fabrics. So if you have any questions, please uh, ask them in the comments and I will get back to you on them. Thanks and have a nice day.